how can we start to bring contextualism in to change this behavior in ourselves? So I have a way of sort of thinking about problems versus, you know, not problem behaviors. And and that's really in terms of the relationship between the context and the behaviors we have access to. And when I say the behaviors we have access to, I mean the choices, the things we could do easily that other people could see and perceive, but also our own thoughts, also our own feelings. And if our goal is flexibility, if our goal is breath, you know, then when we think of what we want for fall, what we'd want for the person who tends to pull out their phone in social situations, what we'd want for them is we'd want the phone to be available. Now, that's a choice that they have. That's something they have access to. You know, they could do that, but also that there's a whole range of other behaviors that they could engage in as well. You know, there's this behavior that might have certain pluses and minuses, certain costs and certain benefits, but they also have access to a tons of other things that they could do. And in my work, we refer to that that relationship when context really pulls for a big, broad repertoire for really what we might experience as, as freedom, right? Like, what do we mean when we say we're free? We mean I could do anything, you know, I suddenly have a cancellation, I've got a whole hour where nobody needs me to be somewhere. That same sort of experience of freedom. We refer to that in my work as appetitive conditions. So appetitive coming from the same word as appetite, right? Another way that you might think about it is a nurturing environment. So an appetitive or nurturing environment. And that's going to look different for everybody, right? Um, an appetitive or a nurturing environment is an environment in which all of your needs are met, in which the resources that are available in that environment are really well matched with what your needs are. Again, in that environment, right? Our needs might change in different contexts. It's all like very specific to the individual and to the circumstance. On the other hand, of course, we can imagine those needs not being met. We might call those environments uh, more aversive. You know, they're, they're not nurturing environments, they're suffering environments, they're environments that promote suffering. And that we would expect that the more fundamental needs that are not met, you know, the, the more that the resources that are available in any one context are not matching well with the needs that are uniquely and personally ours, just from our history and our, our time in the world, to the extent that the environment is not meeting those needs, then we might have what we would call problems, right? To the extent that the environment is aversive or promoting suffering, that what that's a matter of is us missing out on some of those needs. And so our job, you know, with respect to ourselves, ends up being creating a context that nurtures. It means knowing ourselves, knowing how our needs take shape, you know, across a couple of different domains. I mean, just across the board in psychology, there's plenty of folks that have talked about needs. The way that I think about it here would be in terms terms of sort of basic physiological and health and wellness needs. And every single person, there'll be some stuff that just humans need, but also every single person has unique health and wellness needs, unique biological needs that are going to change over the course of a day in different contexts over the course of their lives. So we have basic physiological needs. We have belonging and intimacy needs. We have needs with respect to our relationship with ourselves, how we're growing um, or feeding or nurturing ourselves. And then with respect to those big sort of purposes like our values. Um, and I don't think about these hierarchically necessarily. It's not like you can't care about purpose if you're hungry. <laughs> but rather that all of them can be meet, meant or not meant um, to different levels. So in any one situation, if I'm seeing your behavior kind of shut down and you not have access to a lot of things, you're not experiencing freedom. The thing that you're highly likely to do anytime you get in a social situation is pull out your phone maybe. Then I'd be asking myself, what needs are not being met there? You know, what are you likely to do in nurturing environments that's not accessible to you here in this environment and how could we resource you then in that social situation to where some of those behaviors that are you being your best AJ <laughs> that some of those behaviors would be available to you. Mm -hmm.